Your Excellency, Honorable President of India, my colleagues from the board, and young officer trainees of the 66th batch. It's indeed a matter of pride, sir, for the young officers, trainees of the IRS Customs and Excise of the 66th batch to call on you and get an opportunity to listen to your words of wisdom as they start their career in the service of the nation. Sir, the Indian economy has shown its strength not only remaining structurally strong, but also continuing to grow at an unprecedented rate despite the general slowdown. Foreign direct investment is increasing, the manufacturing sector is expanding, there is greater access to banking, faster adoption of new technologies, and improved human resource development. In this existing global scenario, the officer trainees of the Customs and Excise, by their very nature of work, act as the guardians of the economic frontiers of the country, with the dual responsibility of promoting good trade and fighting bad trade. So I'm pleased to inform you that the National Academy of Customs, Excise, and Narcotics has been grooming the officers at our campus and at other premier institutions throughout the country with field attachments and teaching them international best practices. The officers shall be assuming the independent responsibilities in the field in a few months' time. We have endeavored to instill in them basic good values of the need to ensure the collection of indirect tax revenue in a fair and transparent manner. We have strived to prepare this new force of guardians of economic frontiers who are set to assume their new roles in a dynamic global economy to be friends of the trade. The challenges, however, are manifold, sir, but we are sure that these young officers will rise up to these challenges. The imminent goods and services tax, which will, amongst others, subsume central excise and service tax, two important segments of indirect tax which the CBEC enforces, provides greater challenges and opportunities for the service. I'm happy to inform you, sir, that these officers of the 66th batch have been trained in GST and will be ready to implement GST in right and earnest as and when it rolls out. Sir, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for interacting with these officers, also through the video conference on the theme of innovation, a way of life, and encouraging them. There are no better words than yours to inspire our young officers as they go forth as civil servants. I'm optimistic that these young officer trainees with the hard work, sincerity, and integrity shall leave no stone unturned to provide a fair, transparent, efficient, and non-adversarial indirect tax administration. With these words, sir, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to you for sparing your valuable time uh, from your busy schedule. And as we enter into the festive season, may I, on behalf of the Central Board of Excise and Customs, also wish you warm greetings, sir. Thank you so much. Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee Ji, Sri Najib Shah, Chairman CBC, Srimati Banja Sarna, Member CBC, Senior Officers of Rashtrapati Bhavan, my fellow faculty members from NASEN and officer trainees of 66 batch. It is indeed a privilege for me to present 181 of young officers to you, Honorable President. This 66 IRS Customs and Central Excise Batch were app appointed on the basis of Civil Service Examination 2013 and they reported at Nasen Faridabad on 22nd December 2014. The batch consists of 146 gentlemen and 35 ladies. There is representation from almost all the states of India with Tamil Nadu having the maximum representation followed by Maharashtra, Delhi and Karnataka. The officers of 66th batch have come from diverse educational background, 45% from engineering background and 13% from the medical background. With humanities, science and commerce, the MBAs, postgraduate diploma in management, law degrees, cost accountant and chart account, almost all the branches of disciplines are represented. The officers trainee have been given extensive training on technical legal subjects like customs, central excise service tax, public finance, drug enforcement. They have also been trained on administration, vigilance, soft skills, ethics and integrity. Overall, we have 
try to impart them training to make them efficient officers of government of India. They have also been trained on the physical aspects like uh, the training, physical training, drill, cyber forensic, handling of arms with the Central Industrial Security Academy Hyderabad and National Police Academy Hyderabad. They have also been completed their on-the-job training in the Central Excise, Service Tax and Customs as well along, along with their field attachments. They have also done Central Bureau of Narcotics, Wildlife Institute of India, Dehradun as a part of attachment. They have been also been sent to Indian Coast Guards, Indian Navy and Indian Army. Overall, we have tried to provide them also international exposure by sending them on an attachment to Lee Kuan Yew Public School of Policy, Public School Policy at Singapore, uh, where they did the executive program in leadership and management. Overall, during this one year, 10 months, we have tried to make them officers capable of serving the nation to guard the front economic frontier of India. And I can assure Your Excellency that these young officers will serve the nation with honor, pride, and dignity. With this, I present these provisioners to you, sir. Thank you. Honorable President of India, Shri Pranav Mukherjee, Chairman CBEC, Shri Najib Shah, Member CBEC, Shri Mati Vanaja Sarana, Director General Nasen, Shri P.K. Dash, all dignitaries present, my dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Sir, we began a journey in the winter of December 2014 at National Academy of Customs, Excise and Narcotics. When we first entered the gates of our academy, we were nothing but a varied crowd of eager young minds, segregated and diverse, culturally and academically. Today, all 181 of us here stand before you as united civil servants who have shed their prejudices and inhibitions and are ready to don the mantle of responsible, accountable, and visionary tax administrators. Sir, to achieve this, the training designed by Academy had extensive classroom sessions accompanied with attachments to field formations for an in-depth study, understanding, and interpretation of laws in indirect taxation, supplemented with modules on various other fields. We had a first an experience with our security forces at the sea and land borders to learn from them the service, the sacrifice, and the courage we need to perform the solemn duty of protecting the nation. These interactions with various institutions have immensely broadened our perspectives and have inculcated the habit of keeping the larger picture in the mind in every decision we take. So, we, just we, we had just completed our first posting and completed three months of field duty as assistant commissioners in custom, central excise, and service tax. It was a momentous period for this batch, being the youngest officers in the field when the historic goods and services tax reform was passed by the parliament earlier this month. We are sure that we are capable to truly drive the idea one nation, one tax towards success. As we now start the journey as the sentinels of the economic frontier of a nation, what better way to begin than to reflect upon our experiences with the first citizen of our country in this historic Darbar Hall? Sir, on behalf of my fellow officer trainees of Indian Revenue Service, Customs and Central Excise, I take this moment to express my sincerest gratitude for this honor. Thank you. Jai Hind. Param Shadhe Mahamahim Rashtrapati Shri Pranam Mukherjee, CBC Ke Adhyaksh Shri Najib Shah, Evam Sadasya Shri Mati Vanaja Sarana, Nasen Ke Mahanideshak Shri P. K. Dash, Evam Varishtha Sadasya, Aur Mere Saathi Prasik Shwadhikari, Mere Aap Sabhi Ka Hardi Kavinandan Aur Naman Karta Hoon. Rashtrapati Mahode, Bharati Rajasu Seva, Seema Evam Kendri Utpad Shulk Ke, 66th Batch Ke Prasik Shwadhikariyon Ke Liye, Yeh Atyam Dukarv, तथा सम्मान का विषय है कि आज हमें आपके समक्ष प्रस्तुत होने का अवसर प्राप्त हुआ महोदय देश सेवार्थ कर संचय के इस सूत्र वाक्य को चरितार्थ करने के उद्देश्य से भारतीय राजस्व सेवा की भूमिका पूर्व के मात्र संग्रहकर्ता की अपेक्षा विस्तृत होकर एक सुविधा दाता के रूप में परिवर्तित हो चुकी है कर प्रशासन एवं सरलीकरण के क्षेत्र में उत्कृष्टता प्राप्त करने हेतु नासेन में हमें मूल क्षेत्र के अतिरिक्त विधि अर्थव्यवस्था विश्व व्यापार लोक नीति आदि विषयों में भी प्रशिक्षित किया गया महोदय आपके सम्मुख हमारी उपस्थिति इसलिए और अधिक महत्वपूर्ण और ऐतिहासिक हो गई है क्योंकि वस्तु एवं सेवा कर आज एक वास्तविकता बन चुकी है आजाद भारतवर्ष के सबसे वृहत एवं महत्वपूर्ण अप्रत्यक्ष कर सुधार को मूर्त स्वरूप देने हेतु 
नासेन के प्रयास निरंतरशील हैं आज मुझे यह बताते हुए अत्यंत हर्ष होता है कि प्रशिक्षु अधिकारी होने के साथ साथ हम सभी को वस्तु एवं सेवा करके मास्टर प्रशिक्षकों के रूप में भी विकसित किया गया है और प्रत्यक्ष कर प्रशासकों के रूप में हम सब अपने ऊपर बढ़े दायित्वों को शहर से स्वीकार करते हैं तथा महामहिम राष्ट्रपति जी को यह विश्वास दिलाते हैं कि हमारी योग्यता क्षमता तथा आचार व्यवहार सदैव एक करदाता के जीवन को सरल तथा सुगम करने हेतु तत्पर होंगे अंततः हम आपको यह विश्वास दिलाते हैं कि हम सेवा के प्रारंभ में ली गई प्रतिज्ञा को पूर्ण रूप से निभाएंगे हम संविधान के प्रति श्रद्धा और निष्ठा रखेंगे तथा अपने कर्तव्यों का बिना किसी भेदभाव के पूरी दृढ़ता और ईमानदारी से पालन करेंगे धन्यवाद जय हिंद गुड मॉर्निंग श्री नजीब सर चेयरमैन सेंट्रल बोर्ड ऑफ एक्साइज एंड कस्टम्स मिस मैनेजर एंड शर्मा मेंबर सी बी सी पी के दास डी जी नेशनल अकेडमी ऑफ कस्टम्स एक्साइज एंड नाकोटिक्स फैकल्टी मेंबर्स ऑफ नेशनल अकेडमी ऑफ कस्टम्स एक्साइज एंड नाकोटिक्स provisioners of 66th batch of indian revenue services customs and central excise distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen at the very beginning i would like to welcome you to this historic darbar hall which is known for its historic witnessing of many important events which had transformed the life of this not subcontinent but continent it encompasses not only india as we have today but india pakistan bangladesh myanmar sri lanka the entire territory was administered once by the british government for almost 190 years and this hall witnessed the end of that 190 years old colonial rule at the stroke of midnight of 14th 15th august 1947 again this hall witnessed the historic moment when we stepped in to be the republic of india and the constitution which we adopted was not the product of any royalty or the product of any foreign legislation the people of india they themselves gave this act adopted enacted and gave to themselves on 26th november 1949 in the constituent assembly of india and which was this constitution was adopted on 26th january 1950 evening before that the power transformed from governor general to president of the republic and rajagopal acharya the last governor general of india who was a nominee of the british crown transferred the power of the new india with the constitution to the first president dr rajendra prasad therefore these are just not symbol granite stones or marbles or sandaliers or high domes these are the mute witness of the historic events which have transformed our lives secondly i would like to congratulate you 
all of you for your excellent academic performance because of your success in a highly difficult competitive examination by any standard in the world that is indian civil service examination your success speaks of that excellence in academic performance we can title you to have this service thirdly i would also like to congratulate you of your decision to choose the indian revenue services because none of you were born perhaps your parents were born not not i do not know but as a young man of 37 years old my first ministerial assignment was in the ministry of finance as minister of revenue and expenditure as it was called in those days and thereafter somehow or other finance and revenue has been very intricately related to my personality over the years and when i entered my parliamentary career of 43 years and active political life and entered into this office on 25th july 2012 just a month before that i resigned as the minister of finance which of course includes department of revenue therefore i find always encouraged to see the bright young minds their glittering eyes who join the indian revenue service either the direct taxes or the indirect taxes either under cbdt or cbec when you have entered into the service it is also a very crucial phase of indian economy as it has been mentioned just in the last concluded session of parliament india made a major strike to pass the constitution amendment 122 to enable the government of india and the state governments to enact goods and services taxes as finance minister i spent hours together in 22 meetings with the minister of finances in the state and with my officers who are experts to have this finally i could not reach the stage that's why some newspaper commented and perhaps rightly so that i glued to the television screen two days when parliament was debating the gst bill and truly speaking i felt extremely happy that one major tax reforms we have been able to do as someone has correctly pointed out one nation one tax little bit euphemism is there but nonetheless it is substantially correct because i have seen how many changes have taken place how it has evolved the entire financial business and transactions of the government of india when 1947 india became independent 
this era a debate took place whether independent india should have an independent budget because financial year as per the colonial masters introduced begins from 1st of april and ends on 31st march and the usual practice had been on the last working day of february the finance minister presents his budget there has been occasional exceptions but not many that has been the practice earlier it was after 5 then some years back it was timing was changed and it was brought to 11 i read in the newspaper that there is a thinking of changing this year i do not know as and when it will happen but the fact remains the entire financial activities turnover taxations expenditure classifications of taxation and expenditure accounting has undergone major changes in 1947 you will refuse to believe that the entire revenue collection of the government of india was 171 crores of rupees of which taxation was very simple there was income tax which was introduced in 1861 it accounted for 116 crores and customs duty was 50 crores 50 lakhs 50 and there was a special custom duty on imported alcohol i do not know the reason and rationality of it that was the revenue budget of the government of india in 1947 48 which was presented by the first finance minister shanmugam chetty on 14th november 1947 because earlier the budget for the whole year was presented by mr liyakat ali who was finance member of the interim government and later on became the prime minister of pakistan therefore there is long history of this and what budget <coughs> present finance minister presented on last february it was around 16 lakh crores of rupees and your customs duty itself accounted for 7.11 lakh crores of rupees not customs duty indirect taxes customs duty central excise service tax and all these were not from the very beginning it was mr tt krishna machari after pretty long years almost 8 9 years who first introduced the central excise duty service taxes were introduced much later but they have occupied larger space in the overall tax collection and tax growth therefore the system has become extremely complex state government as per the constitutional provision have the right to impose taxes and duties on items specified to them as per the distribution of items in the list 2 of the 7th schedule of the constitution list 1 is union list list 2 is the state list list 3 is the concurrent list all the items of administration and taxations have been enumerated there and distributed union list state list and concurrent list and residual items of course have been left to the union list. so over the years there has been phenomenal changes with the enhanced complexities 
and we have entrusted the responsibility of implementing this tremendous job on the young soldiers of our officers. I welcomed you for your decision to join the civil service. Why? Because till today, no other service in multilateral corporations, you may have more salary packet, more parks. But in the age of 30s, the tremendous responsibility you will discharge in the civil service. You will not have this responsibility in any other service. You can serve your nation, you can serve your country. You can make your own contribution in building up the economy of the country by your efforts. Because state has entrusted in you to discharge a very important sovereign responsibility of the state. Sovereign responsibility of the state is to collect revenue, to administer the financial, fiscal system appropriately, because it is the lesson of the history. Stories of civilization that without proper management of finance and economy, Country cannot advance, country cannot develop. If you read the historic epic of Gibbons, Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire, one of the major reasons you will find that the mighty empire collapsed because they were more interested in spending than in earning. Today, if you analyze, there are a lot of jargons, big phrases, but ultimately the whole, at the root of the whole European crisis is what? Some European countries refuse to pay more taxes to meet their expenditure, to work more to increase the wealth of the country and to reduce the social security responsibilities to meet, balance the budget seat of the country. And they expect that somebody else will meet their unpaid bills and they will go on merrily, enjoying social security, not doing hard work, not paying more taxes, which is not possible. That's why the crisis is not yet resolved. Government after government are being changed. And the result which dominated, as a consequence of that, which dominated the world economy, along with the North American countries, USA and others, today Europe is truly seeing as a large number of countries do not know how to face the challenges. Their total debt is sometimes 126% of their GDP, 136% of the GDP. How they can survive? So International Monetary Fund, World Bank, finance ministers of G20, Prime Ministers and Presidents of G20, annually, twice, thrice, four times they are meeting and trying to find it a way out where this crisis can be resolved. Unless it is done, the world economy is not recovering. We are fortunate. Fortunate in the sense, at least for the time being, this adverse trend in the overall eco world economy, Indian economy has grown substantially. 
if you take the larger period of 10 years, 15 years, average growth of Indian economy is more than 8 percent. Even when the world depression is going on, at that point of time, the Indian economic growth is 7.2 percent previous year. This year and subsequent year, it, would, it is project, projected as 7.5 percent, which is reasonably high compared to the sluggish growth rate of the whole world. Therefore, as a responsible person to fill the exchequer by collecting the indirect taxes, now with the introduction of the GST, somebody expects by 2017, but if not 2017, at least I hope 2018-19 it will be possible to implement it. Implementation will be the responsibility of you. And the smooth transition to GST, because there will be areas of conflict. If somebody goes through the history of the federalism, they will find on two issues. The most modern federal system, ideal federal system, whether it is in Australia or it is Canada or it is USA, on money and finance, always there will be conflicts. On share of natural resources, always there will be divergence of views. There can be mechanism through which the smooth transactions can take place and whatever required reforms and changes are needed could be implemented, and that would be the job of the young officers of CBEC. That's why the state has entrusted its sovereign power, sovereign power of holding the parts of the state. Sovereign power is also in the other hand. One hand you will have your, hold the parts, on the other hand, you will hold the sword. You have the authority to punish the defaulters, tax evaders, blackmail cutters, smugglers, foreign exchange racketeers. Series of laws have been enacted by parliament. Very serious power has been given at the hands of the officers. I remember it in my early years. I had the major problem of tackling the problem of smuggling, foreign exchange racketeering. Four, five years I had to relentlessly fight against the smugglers, foreign exchange racketeers. Because the unofficial howler transactions, it was operated so smoothly that people did not transact through banks. Money, ill-gotten money was just paid outside the jurisdiction of the country. Recipients were received. They had no complaint because they received at, on date with little better rate. And this unholy excess created a situation where the state exchequer suffered serious foreign exchange depletion took place. Today, when we look at 365 billion US dollar as our reserves, we forget that just 30 years ago, even less than that, we had to pledge our gold to the Bank of India, several tons of gold just to borrow a few million, few hundred million dollars to meet our international debt repayment commitment. Therefore, these things are to be always kept in mind while taking their decisions. 
And here I would like to keep you in mind always that vice of Machiavelli. That your job is not to please the taxpayers. Yes, you will facilitate. You will help him. But at the same time, you will collect. You will get the due share of the government. Your approach would be shaking hands with velvet. But handshake would be hard. It will reflect the sovereign authority and power of the state so that nobody can evade and avoid. There is a beautiful saying of Kautillo in his Arth <coughs> Shastra. He discussed many issues of the statecraft. And my advice to you would be, you read like Bhagavad Gita. You will learn so many things, different aspects of the statecraft. But so far you are concerned, tax collection is concerned, he is very beautifully describing how you will collect the tax. And he is comparing that a tax collector should be like a bee. As a bee draws honey from the flower without disturbing the petals and destroying the flower, and has the tremendous knowledge, or you can say instinct. He knows that how much is to be drawn, beyond which it should not be drawn. So your job would be like that, and this will come through your expertise. That expertise you will command, as an when you proceed in your career, in your service, and particularly nowadays with the information technology, with the availability of the so many instruments at your position, always you shall have to update yourself so that you can be truly the assets of the country. Because we are to discharge series of responsibilities. A vast land of 128 crores people. Still there is wonderful unity amidst diversity. Sometimes I wonder, 128 crores people, all three major ethnic groups, in no country in the world you will find such a huge percentage of Caucasians, Dravidians, and Mongolite, all three distinct ethnicities in a huge number. 1,600 languages and dialects. In our daily life, every day we are using 100 languages. But still, we are under one flag. We are under one constitution. We are one nation. This inherent strength of your country, you represent that when I talk of sovereign power. Sovereign power does not mean merely imposition of taxes and realizing it. It means many things. I am afraid I have taken a little longer time than I intended to have. I am sorry for that. But once again, I congratulate you. I wish you all success in your future endeavor. Thank you. Jai Hind. Respected Sri Pranav Mukherjee, Honorable President of India, Mr. Najib Shah, Chairman CVC, Mr. PK Dash, DG Nasan, Faculty of Nasan and Dear Officer Trainees. I feel extremely honored and privileged to propose a vote of thanks on this momentous occasion when the young officers of the 66th batch of IRS Customs and Central Excise are meeting the Honorable President of India. Sir, it is a moment of pride and honor for the service 
that the Honorable President has granted audience to these young officers. I'm extremely grateful to you, sir, for sparing your valuable time and enlightening the young officers with your vision, direction, and aspirations of our countrymen. And we thank you, sir, and we really didn't mind the long time at all. We thought it was really, really useful for our probationers to hear you. We fondly remember, sir, your stints as the Finance Minister of India, your dynamic leadership, sense of engagement with the service and the officers has been tremendous and a great model booster for all of us. Sir, your valuable words of advice to the young officers shall motivate them for excellence in public service delivery and encourage them to dedicate themselves to the service of the nation. Sir, your dedication to the Office of President is an inspiration for us all. The inauguration of the Rashtra Thibhavan Museum in order to bring people closer to governance and the transformation of this estate into a smart township are just two examples of your leadership and vision. I'm sure that these and other innovations you have brought about will serve as a guiding factor for the officer trainees when they assume office. I would like to express our sincere thanks to Ms. Amita Paul, Secretary to the Honorable President of India, Mr. Rajneesh, Private Secretary, Mr. Shok Mehta, OSD, for providing all possible assistance in the organization of this important event. My special thanks to Mr. Sanjeev Sethi, Deputy Military Secretary, and Mr. Sharad Sharma, Deputy Secretary to Honorable President, for helping us make this event a success. Once again, sir, I, on behalf of the Chairman CBC and the entire board, would like to express my deepest gratitude to the Honorable President for giving audience to the young officer trainees and officers of CBC and NASA. Thank you. Jai Hind.